He was known as a professional soldier, a Christian man, with the characteristic of the generosity, especially amongst his soldiers. He lived for three decades in the Arabian deserts, between the Bedouins, where he attracted their world and their qualities. He spoke Arabic fluently. His work in Iraq during the British Mandate were the most violent policies, were used against the rebellious tribes by bombing them with aircraft. He led the Arab Legion in Jordan and gave it many advices and instructions. He led this legion to one of the few victories during the first war against Israel. Many of his opponents see that his authority weakened the king's rule in Jordan and his loyalty to the Hashemite rule was permanently in doubt. He served in the Jordanian army for nearly a quarter of the century until 1956. When he returned to England, he wrote nearly 20 important books on the history of Islam and Arab affairs. This person is John Baggett Globe. In 1897, John Baggett Globe was born in Preston, Lancashire, from the Anglo-Irish military family. His father is Sir Frederick Manley Globe. He was a senior officer in the British Army Corps of Engineers. Globe educated at Cheltenham College. He gained a commission in the Royal Engineers in 1915. He suffered a short jaw on the Western Front of the First World War. In later years, this will lead to his Arabic nickname of Abu Hinnik, meaning the one with the little jaw. He was then transferred to Iraq in 1920, which Britain has started governing under a League of Nations mandate following the First World War. At that time, the armed unrest by the Arab tribes against that mandate was continuing in their country. But when Globe arrived in Iraq, British forces repressed the tribal revolt at a great financial cost. He was posted to Ramadi, a city in central Iraq, in 1922. In that period, he learned Arabic language, began at that stage his interest in Arab culture. He was particularly interested in the civilization of Iraq. He visited several archaeological sites and he made several exploratory trips to the desert. He was appointed as an intelligence officer of the Royal Air Force. He was charged with the mission of building bases for the British aircraft around Baghdad suburbs in order to face and quickly any tribal attack through air strikes and to carry out several air attacks against the tribe's outlaw which refused to pay taxes. The idea of using airplanes to overcome distance and bad communication seems very tempting. Aircraft can be focused on a particular base. They can take quick action within hours against any hostile clan despite the vastness of the geographical area of marshes, mountains or arid desert. But the globe admit the many mistakes in determining air targets. This is because two geographical difficulties which characterize that area where many probe government clans were bombed. In that period, the daily aerial bombing of the villages in very cruel and brutal manner was an expression of British mandate policy which took the form of punishment as the best means to rule. In 1927, Globe resigned from his position in the British Army and became an administrative inspector for Southern Sahara affairs in the Royal Iraqi government. He was able to establish close relations with the local Bedouin population, where he traveled wide distances in the depths of the desert. In his book, War in the Desert, John Klopp describes the personality of the Bedouin man when he said, the Bedouins have a special quality that shows that there are no complications in their lives. They don't care about material considerations. Their self-awareness is weak. They accept the world as it is. They are like children in an environment filled with bloodshed and violence. 
Because of their excellency and honesty and direct conversation, simplicity in life made all them poets. And about the personality of the Bedouin fighter, Glob says. The Bedouin is a tough man and he loves to fight, but he is very volatile and calm. He does not want to exterminate his enemies or expand its influence to other regions. And the wars he makes to get spoils are a kind of sport. The only thing that makes the Bedouins cruel and forces them to rally for his service is religion. At that time, the Arab Sahara was witnessing tribal invasions and brutal massacres carried out by radical religions groups known as Muslim Brotherhood or Wahhabis. The name is referred to radical cleric Muhammad bin Abdul Wahhab, which he called to adhere to Islamic religion's principles, as it has been since its beginning for the first time. This group was under the protection of Riyadh governor Abdul Aziz Al Saud, which he sponsored this group since 1912 and used it to strengthen its powers throughout the Arabian Peninsula. As a result of the use of excessive violence by them, at least 400,000 people were killed and injured. Globe was a witness to these massacres and mass escape operations by frightened tribesmen and their families. Globe played a prominent role in the face of those radical groups by using several airstrikes where he bombed their camps and he carried out several ground military campaigns on their whereabouts. In 1930, Glob was invited to join the Arab army in Jordan, which was organized by British officer General Frederick Gerard Beek in 1921, as a force that includes Arabs, Kurds, Turks and Circassians. Glob became the second man in command after General Frederick. The main mission was given to Glob is to ensure the preservation of the borders of that emirate and end tribal conflicts there. He formed the Desert Patrol, a force consisting exclusively of Bedouin. Within a few years, he had persuaded the Bedouin to abandon their habit of raiding neighboring tribes. In 1939, Loeb succeeded Frederick Peak as the commander of the Arab Legion, subsequently known as the Jordan Royal Army. In 1946, Jordan gained independence from the Great Britain as a reward from the loyalty of the ruler of the Jordan, Abdullah, throughout the years of the Great War. King Abdullah tried to expand his kingdom by annexing parts of neighboring Palestine to Jordan. In February 1947, the United Kingdom announced the termination of its mandate over Palestine. British troops left the Mandate area. In November 1947, the United Nations issued a resolution dividing Palestine in two parts, Jewish and Arab states. The State of Israel was declared in May 1948. Six Arab armies, including Jordan, declared war on the new state and launched a military offensive to expel the Jewish militias from Palestine. During the 1948 Arab-Israel War, the Arab Legion was considered the strongest Arab army involved in the war. Glob led the Arab Legion across the River Jordan to occupy the West Bank. Despite some negotiation between the Jewish Agency and King Abdullah, severe fighting took place in Kafar Atezian, Jerusalem and Letron. After months of fighting, in early 1949, an armistice agreement with the Jews were reached and the globe remained responsible to defense of the West Bank.
On July 21, 1951, during Friday prayers at the Al-Aqsa Mosque in Palestine, King Abdullah was assassinated, and his grandson, al Hussein ibn Talal, was crowned King of Jordan in the 2nd of the May, 1953. At the beginning of the reign of the new king, there were several differences between Glob and King Hussein, particularly related about the topics of the promotions of Arab officers and founding the Arab Legion. Glob retained command of the Arab Legion until 1st of the March 1956, when King Hussein dismissed him and several other British senior officers in the Arab Legion. Glob left Jordan in 1956 and spent the rest of his life writing books and articles, mostly about the Middle East and his experience with the Arabs. In his book on his autobiography, which was issued in 1957 under the title A Soldier with the Arabs, Glob explained his life and his experience with the Arab world when he said, I spent 30 years living among the Arabs. During the first 19 years of that period, I lived together with them. I rarely met a European person. Indeed, sometimes the weeks would go by without me speaking one English word. I first went to Iraq in 1920 as a regular officer in the British Army in pursuit of new fields of literature and for a wider knowledge of the many and modern martial arts. But after five years, I decided to change the basis of my career completely. I made the decision to resign from the British Army and devote my life to the Arabs. My decision was very emotional. I loved them. And about the Globus family life, in 1938, Globe married Muriel Rosemary Forbes, the daughter of physician James Graham Forbes. The couple had a son, Godfrey, born in Jerusalem, 1939. In 1944, they adopted Naomi, a Bedouin girl, and in 1948, they adopted two Palestine refugee children called Atallah and Mary. Globe died in 1986 at his home in Mayfield. King Hussein gave the eulogy at the service of thanksgiving for Globe's life. The memory of the Globe is still alive among the ancient Bedouins. Globe played a prominent role in the formation and establishment of the Jordanian army, which over time has become the main factor in maintaining the stability of Jordan and its throne.